Hello student, this is a lecture of physical chemistry. Friends, in our previous lecture, we have discussed about the characterization of crystalline compound or crystal lattice with the help of X-ray diffraction technique. So this is one of the most important method that is Bragg's equation or Bragg's method to characterize the crystal lattice with the help of X-ray radiation. So this Bragg's equation we have derived that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta where n is the number of order of reflection lambda is the wavelength of X-ray radiation and d, d is the distance between the two successive plane and theta is the angle of incident or angle of reflection both angle are the same we call it as glancing angle we also discuss the application of this Bragg equation can be used to determine or characterize the lattice parameter that is distance between the two planes by using the Bragg's equation we have also use this Bragg equation to determine the wavelength of the X-ray radiation if we know the distance between the two plane and the glancing angle theta then we can able to determine wavelength of the X-ray radiation. Now we will move to instrumentation part that is Bragg, Bragg's method. So for this method, the instrument or develop are called as X-ray spectrophotometer. So, in this method, we can able to determine the angle of reflection. Once we get the angle of reflection, then we can use this angle of reflection with the help of Bragg's equation. We can able to find out the distance between the two crystal planes that means lattice parameter. In short, we can analyze the lattice or crystal. Let us see. The angle of reflection and the intensity of reflected beam can be measured by using Bragg X-ray spectrophotometer. The schematic diagram of Bragg spectrometer is as shown in the figure. So this is the X-ray tube. That means in this tube, the X-ray is generated. This generated X-ray is propagated through the slit S1, S2 towards the, the middle table. This is movable table or we can say a goniometer. On this table, we can mount the single crystal. Along this movable table or goniometer there will be the detector part that is ionization detector for this spectrometer the gas ionization detector can be used this beam is reflected by this crystal crystal plane can be determined by this detector d and we can able to find out the angle of glancing angle or angle of reflection and angle of incident so that we can measure so how the x-ray is generated in this x-ray tube that means source of x-ray so let us see in atomic level here we use the source of metal that means in previous lecture we already discussed the metal like copper iron that we can use on this metal plate, we can bombard the high voltage electron. Now, this electron will be responsible to generate the X-ray radiation. So, how this chemical reaction is going on, let us see. So, this is the atom. Let us consider the atom of iron. So, here center is nucleus. In nucleus, there will be proton and neutron. And the electrons are revolving around the in the orbits that we already know about the atomic structure. 
so what happened this high voltage electron are collide with this metal which responsible which results the innermost electron that means the electrons in innermost orbital will be escape in this way so here the vacancy will be created here the vacancy is created so naturally what happen the electron present in outermost orbital will come into this vacant place that means according to the above principle that electron first pair in the first orbit and then second orbit so this vacancy is created due to this vacancy the electron in outer orbital is easily come into the innermost orbital to fill the vacancy created by this escape electron so what happen the energy of this electron in outermost orbital will be higher then it loses some energy and come into the lower orbital so this excess of energy will be eliminated or emitted in the in the form of x ray and in this way the x ray radiation will be generated the process is continuously going on in the metal and we get the continuous source of x ray radiation so whole principle whole chemical reaction is going on in this atom that that we can we have used in the x ray tube so in this way we can able to generate the x ray radiation so let us see the principle how the spectrometer spectrophotometer work when x ray radiations from the source are diffracted by a particular set or planes of the crystal then the intensity of diffract diffracted or reflected beam of x ray is depend on the path difference that we have already discussed about in uh, bragg equation when path difference is in integral multiple of the wavelength then intensity is maximum when intensity is maximum that is the limitation so this is a bragg equation part difference is equal to n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta so how this spectrometer work that will discuss in the procedure the angle theta the diffraction intensity corresponding to the theta is determined with the help of bragg's x-ray spectrophotometer the x-ray are produced by the x-ray tube the homogeneous monochromatic beam of x-ray is obtained by passing it through the slit s1 s2 the rays is then allowed to pass to the ionization chamber that means up to the detector which is fitted on the goniometer or rotating table the table is rotate to obtain a maximum current flow the corresponding theta is noted on a vernier scale on goniometer it is recorded as initial position now a crystal is mounted at the center of the rotating table in a such way that the x ray beam will be strike a particular set of planes of the crystal now the table is rotated along the ionization chamber that means along the detector in a such a way that the reflected beam is slowly enter into the ionization chamber to get the maximum current and the theta is recorded on the vernier scale the difference in the initial position is double the angle of incident theta that means 2 theta for the first order of reflection n is equal to 1 the table again rotate slowly to get angle 2 theta for the second order of reflection in this way we can find out the third order of reflection we get the 2 theta and from 2 theta we can able to find out theta this theta value we will substitute in bragg's equation that is n lambda is equal to 2d sin theta we know the order of reflection we know the wavelength 
we know the angle of reflection that is theta from this to theta then we can able to find out the interplanar distance d between the planes of the crystal can be calculated from theta and d the structure of crystal can be easily determined so in this way the spectrophotometer is work so there will be several numericals on this topic so let us see one or two numericals naturally occurring gold crystallized in fcc structure and has a density 19.3 gram per cc find the atomic radius of the gold given is molar atomic mass of gold that is 197 gram per mole so they have asked about the atomic radius of the gold so we first isolate the given things that is molar atomic mass of the gold is given avogadro's number that is constant that we know number of atom present in fcc structure that already we know that is fcc structure has four number of atoms the density is given 19.3 per cc so we know the relation between density and the volume of the unit cell or crystalline compound density d is equal to 4 into m upon a cube into avogadro's number 4 is the number of atom in fcc so this is fcc structure so we just rearrange this equation volume terms in this way volume is equal to volume of unit cell a a cube is equal to 4 into m divided by density into avogadro's number so we know the molar mass we know the density avogadro's number we can able to find out the volume of the crystal so here we get the volume of crystal and we know the relation between the here we get the volume of uh, crystal is a cube is equal to 6.78 into 10 to the minus 23 so from this a cube we can able to find out a then we get a is equal to 4.08 into 10 to the minus 8 cm and we know the relation between the lattice parameter a and the radius for fcc structure that means the relation is radius r is equal to under root 2 by 4 into the a that is edge length so that a already we have determined from the volume so should the value of a then we can able to find out the radius of the atom r is equal to 1.44 into 10 to the minus 8 cm or in angstrom 1.44 angstrom so answer will be the atomic radius of gold is 1.44 angstrom so that we can able to find out the radius of the atom from this data so similar numerical is there silver is crystallized in fcc structure with edge length 4.0710 to minus 8 cm here the edge length is given if the density of metallic silver is 10.5 so density also given and what they ask to calculate the molar atomic mass of the silver so first we isolate the given things fcc structure that means number of atom in fcc unit cell will be the 4 edge length is given 4.07 into 10 to the minus 8 then density is given 10.5 gram per cc per ml avogadro's number is constant and then what we find out atomic mass of the silver so we know the relation between atomic mass and molar mass that is atomic mass of the one silver atom is equal to molar mass divided by avogadro's number if the crystal is fcc this then mass of the unit cell is 4 into mass of one atom m upon n a so volume of unit cell we know v is equal to a cube that is length width height is equal to 4.0712 minus 8 bracket raised to 3 so we get the volume so substitute the value of volume avogadro's number and density is given so we get we can able to find out the molar mass or atomic mass of the silver so rearrange the equation then 
we can able to find out the mass atomic mass of the silver that is capital m is equal to 106.6 gram per mole so the atomic molar mass of the silver is 106.6 gram per mole so in this way we can able to find out molar mass atomic radius volume density if the other things will be a given so here we stop the lecture in next lecture we will go to see the defects in the crystal structure thank you